Hi everyone, welcome to the part 3 of learning advanced Go. As promised, in this video we'll touch on some testing techniques. More specifically, we're going to test our report manager we created previously. So far, we've created three packages. Reporting, which contains the report manager. Report store, which currently only contains some interfaces describing the expected behavior from a report store. And the utility package for generating UUIDs. So our report manager relies on two other dependencies, report store and UUID. It receives a create report request from somewhere, we don't care where now, does some enrichment to that data, adding a random report ID and a default status, and makes a create report request to the store layer. To test the functionality of our report manager without requiring an actual implementation for each and every single one of its dependencies, we should use mocks. To make our lives a little easier, we'll use some of the very popular tools for testing that are available in the open source world. First one is Testify, which is like a toolkit for testing. We'll be using its require and suite sub packages. Next up is GoMock, which is useful for generating mocks for um, any arbitrary interface. If you're not familiar with GoMock, please go through its documentation and make sure you install uh, MockGen as well. So now, not only do I want to generate the mock code for the depend dependencies, but I also want to automate the whole process so in the future when we make other changes, we don't have to worry, hey, what do I have to do now? What sort of command should I run? Add the following, following line to the top of the uuid.go file. Start with a comment, then without any space, go colon generate. This is a special sign for go generate command and it runs for us for us what comes after it. Generate mock for uuid.go put the generated code inside mock uuid underline mock.go and use mock as a package name. Let's save the changes and do the same for a report store. Go generate mock gen use the source file store.go output to mock slash store mock.go and use mock as a package name. Next, create a source file on the root of the project. With the following rule. Generate hyphen mock. Let's run make generate hyphen mock. Now check this out. Inside the package UUID, we have another directory called mock that contains all of the generated code for its interface. The same goes for report store. Now we've successfully generated mocks for both our dependencies. Now back to our create report method in report manager. Create a file manager test.go. As mentioned before, we are using testify suites for, for testing our code. Let's start by defining our suite. The way testify suites work is that you have to embed them inside your structs. Also, I prefer using require instead of assert, so I'm going to embed that as well. We need a GoMock controller to use our mocks. Again, that's how GoMock works. You can always consult its documentation.
and the two mocks for the report manager. and the manager itself. Let's save and see how much is imported for us automatically. Well, of course, we don't have packages mock report store and mock UID. These are just aliases I'd rather use instead of plain mock because they're more descriptive. So let's add those manually. So in Go, you mark a function as a test case by starting with the word test with capital T with this particular signature. But here, since we are using testify suites, we just want to pass everything to our suite and use a slightly different approach. Save and enjoy the free import. Testify Suite provides a couple of very helpful hooks that are run, for example, before and after test cases. Setup test is run before in each and every test case. In it, we just reinitialize everything. Also teardown, which is run after each and every test. We need to call finish off of our controller to make sure our assertions pass. We finally get to um, testing the create report method. Let's have some dummy variables. A report ID, a user ID, and a title. We expect our mock UUID generator to be called once, and once called, it returns the dummy report ID above.
Also, we expect the create report method of our mock store to be called once with these arguments. When called, it returns no error. Now let's call the create report method from our report manager and get the actual response. should get no error. And we expect the response to be like so. Let's do the assertion for that. Looks like there are some problems. All right, uh, it's just a typo. Actually, we should pass the controller to these factory functions. That's why I mentioned earlier we needed the controller to be able to use our mocks. Compile one more time. It's because of the import, so let's change it. Or rather, uh, let's change this one. Another typo. It must compile this time around. Yes, and let's run the test. Here we go. We'll actually run it inside the terminal later as well. For now, let's add another test case for when there's a failure in our system. Like this part when the report store returns an error. Let's add another function for that. Let's call it test create report error.
this time around, stores create report method returns an error. Some dummy error message. We should get that exact same error. Making sure everything is correct. Now let's go run the test in the terminal. And yes, it's passing. We've now accomplished our goals for this video. In the next video or set of videos, we'll finally start working with Scylla and provide an implementation for the report store package. We'll probably start off by defining our schemas and automating table creation. Then we'll dive into making queries from our Go app. Please make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and see you then.